I want to thank you for tuning in or watching our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. My name is Pastor Michael Eton, and I serve as the senior pastor right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And we want to welcome you to today's program. Before we get into our study tonight, I want to take this opportunity to extend a personal invitation for those who do not have a church home. If you do not have a church home and you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma or Garvin County, I want to extend this personal invitation for you to join us right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. We'd love to see your face in this place. Why don't you come visit us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. It's a one-hour service. Bring a family member or a friend with you, and we'll welcome you to the household of the Lord right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Visit our website at uh, www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com, and there you can get to know us. And once you get to know us, why don't you scroll down to the bottom and click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, the LinkedIn tab, and follow or friend us in what I call Cyber Church. We'd love for you to be a part of our Cyber Church family, but ultimately, if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, we want to see you right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Tonight is a Bible study that's meant to go from 6 p.m. to 6.40. However, we always allow the Holy Spirit to move and does do as he does. But over my shoulder, we're having opening prayer announcements, the reading of the word, the introduction video, the Bible study, itself, the invitation, and the benediction. You can see this over my shoulder. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We Glorify your holy name. You're always worthy to be praised. We come today, Lord, asking you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, wash us and cleanse us, that, that we might be in re right relationship with you, that we might be in right fellowship with you, that we might be able to uh, hear a word from the Lord. Father, we need thee. We seek your face. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. A few announcements before we get into the study. Um, we want to let you know, Bethlehem and saints of God, we're going to be fasting and praying this Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Fasting and praying for our church and for the many in our church that are going through a heavy burden and carrying a heavy load. Uh, we believe that Jesus said this kind comes out, but by prayer and fasting, we here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church believe in the power of prayer. And I'm going to send out the pastor's prayer list uh, tomorrow. And I want you to fast and pray on this coming Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Fast and pray your burden. And also, Bethlehem and Saints of God, I ask you to fast and pray for our television program that's going to start airing uh, in June. It's going to start airing in June on the now network and behind me are the ways that you can see it. Uh, if you have Roku, if you have Apple TV or some of the other cable or satellite uh, channels, you can tune in um, to our television program. So I want you to fast and pray for that as well. I want you to fast and pray for this coming Sunday. I'm so excited for the 16th pastor's anniversary. I want you to fast and pray for Brother Chad Gray, and to the fast and pray for Brother Michael Ford, that God would use them in a mighty and awesome way, fast and pray for the day that it will be a day that God can be glorified. I know it's going to be a day that God can be glorified because uh, I'm here because of the will of God. It was the will of God that brought me here. This was, wouldn't have been a choice that I would have made for myself. I would have missed out on 16 years of blessing. That's why I can't. Uh, see it as me in and of myself. This is all God. I'm talking all 16 years. All God, we have to point to his glory. That's why I'm so excited. I want to glorify him this coming Sunday for all that he has done in my life and the life of our church. So let's fast and pray this coming Sunday. 
We are excited. Look forward to the fellowship. You're all invited. Uh, we're going to start feeding at 1.30, I believe. So join us here at Bethlehem Baptist Church 311 North Dunbar. You know where it is, most of you, in Jesus' name. This month, we're starting a new series. And it is a new series entitled A Woman's Worth. A Woman's Worth. And I, and I pray that this series will be a great encouragement uh, to the women of Bethlehem as well as to the body of Christ because we don't praise um, our women enough. And the Bible says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And that's what we're going to see how. We want to teach women how uh, to get praise because there are uh, many, especially with the young women, uh, they get praise by doing stuff online or on Instagram and showing parts of them that only their mates should probably see because they get likes, they get views, and some are doing it because they get money. They make a purse, they call it the purse, they get the purse, and they make it money, and it's all about money, and this is how they get their praise, and, and for some, this is how they get their worth by what men say that they are. But long before mama and daddy ever made you long before mom and daddy had any thought of you. God created you in your mother's womb. And, and because God created you, I can imagine we should be open to hearing how women should get their praise and why women should get their praise. So this month, uh, we're going to praise women as well as teach her the way God's woman should get her worth. Let me say that again. We're going to this month, we're going to praise her as well as teach her the way God's woman should get her worth. And we're going to talk on around um, uh, these uh, subjects. We're going to talk about uh, tonight, we're going to talk about a woman should get her worth through prayer as we look in the life of Hannah. A woman should get her worth uh, through procreation as we look in the life of Eve. Uh, and then we're going to praise our mothers because Mother's Day is coming on May the 14th. Mother's Day is coming. Let's prepare to make our mother's Bethlehem feel special because a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. We want to manifest that word in the church this coming Mother's Day on May the 14th. A woman should get her worth through the purse. Now, I said some, some women are doing some, something for the purse to make money, but these women use their purse uh, to support the ministry in Jesus' name. A woman should get her worth through perseverance as we look in the life of Sarah. A woman should get her worth through politics as we look in the life of Deborah. A woman should get her worth through persistence as we look in the life of Ruth. A woman should get her worth uh, through proclamation. Really, this whole series was born out of the last series, or last word, that we talked last month on, and it was what to do when your life has been utterly destroyed. And uh, the last word we talked about were the women that were there and their proclamation of the gospel. They were the first ones to do it. Uh, so we pray that uh, this series will encourage the heart, mind, and souls of the women of Bethlehem and women all around, all across uh, Oklahoma and our district, state, and our nation. But tonight we're going to look at a word entitled, a woman should get her worth through prayer. A woman should get her worth through prayer. And let's read this in your hearing. Uh, and it is 1 Samuel uh, verse uh, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 and 17. It says, in her deep anguish, Hannah, what did she do in her deep anguish? She prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you would look, only look on your servant's misery and remember me 
and not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. Verse 17, Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Read to you 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 to 11 and 17. May God only bless the doers of his awesome and his mighty word. Today, we're going to continue and we're going to share uh, three points. The Holy Spirit gives us utterance. We're going to talk about Hannah's. Hannah prayed vigorously. We're going to look at Hannah prayed a vow and Hannah prayed victory. Hannah prayed vigorously. Hannah prayed a vow and Hannah prayed victory. When Christian women, Christian women should pray vigorously for their victory. He said it again. Christian women should pray vigorously for their victory. And of course, you know, the word cuts both ways. So men, you should pray vigorously ah, for your victory as well in Jesus' name. We're going to look at this brief video, and then we'll get into word. A woman's life was made absolutely miserable by her husband's other woman. But when she went to pray, she was accused of being drunk in God's house and told by the priest to get out. It seemed that no matter where she turned, she was judged and condemned. This isn't from some soap opera or TV drama. It's from the Bible. There was a man in Israel named Elkanah who had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah was not able to. When Elkanah and his family went to offer sacrifices in the tabernacle in Shiloh, Elkanah made sure that Hannah got special treatment, like extra portions of the sacrificial meal, to console her for her lack of children. But Penina would mock and ridicule Hannah for being infertile. Every year, on their way to the tabernacle for the sacrifices, it was the same situation. Penina teasing and taunting Hannah until Hannah was reduced to tears. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having ten sons? One day, after going to a sacrificial ceremony, Hannah got up to go pray near the tabernacle. Eli, the priest, was sitting near the entrance and noticed Hannah there. Her heart was broken at this point, and she begged God to give her the ability to have children. She even made a vow to God that if he gave her a son, she would dedicate him as a servant of God for his whole life. Eli, the priest, was watching as she prayed. Her mouth was moving, but Hannah was not speaking out loud, only praying in her thoughts. Must you come here drunk? he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Thank you, sir, she said. No longer feeling quite so sad, Hannah went back to her family and finally was willing to eat again. Amen, and praise the Lord. Amen, and praise the Lord. We're going to look at this map. We've been breaking out the maps ever since Loyalty Month last year. And uh, we're in a time of Samuel, or before Samuel, really. Uh, but we're starting with Samuel chapter one, the book of Samuel, to which Samuel wrote, and he's telling his own story. And at this time of Samuel, 
uh, the highest and most holy place was not down here in Jerusalem. Um, it wasn't down here in Bethlehem. The highest and holiest of places back then was Shiloh. And some of you in America know that uh, you have churches called Shiloh Baptist Church. And, 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 and people named their churches after Shiloh because Shiloh was where the Ark of the Covenant was before they brought it. They say it's about 20 miles from Jerusalem to Shiloh going up north before they brought it. And we know David was the one who brought it down uh, from Shiloh uh, back to Jerusalem, though he had some errors in, in, in trying to get it there. But he got it there and that tabernacle turned into the temple that David would build or he wouldn't, not David, but he would collect the materials to build that Solomon, his son, would be able to build down here in Jerusalem. But back then when they went to worship, uh, they went up to Shiloh. If They were down in this area. They had to go up to Shiloh. And we have a very complicated story today. If we tell it really well, as the video said, we have a story of two sister wives. Hannah was one of those sister wives. Now, I want you to know, Christian folk, that God never condone uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, polygamy, uh, having more than one wife. He never condoned sister wives, but it was a culture of, of this area and many parts of Africa, even still to this day, where men who can afford it would take more than one wife. So uh, this whole situation was a real bad, uh, horrible looking situation in it all. But, but Hannah was a sister wife and, and the other sisters we saw in the video, she, uh, she was able to have babies, but Hannah couldn't. And, and, and we saw in the video and in the word that she taunted, that sister wife taunted uh, Hannah for not being able to have babies. And there's been struggles with this in the Bible where women couldn't have babies. It was, it was uh, uh, Sarah had a struggle with it. We're gonna look at her faith in the series. Uh, but there are many women who struggle with trying to have a child and it was utterly impossible, more so impossible in their day because um, there was, they didn't have the medical ingenuity that we have where we can get uh, people to harvest their eggs and, and sperm and, and they can later join them together or, or they can harvest a woman's eggs and, and at, at, at 25 or 30 and she can uh, have them placed in her body with a seed at 50 and, and you could have, and, and it's very expensive still, it's very expensive though. And it's a very tumult, tumultuous process where they got to give themselves needs. It's a very hard process. But still to this day, women struggle with giving birth. And this is what Hannah did, but Hannah didn't have ah, the Petri dish. Hannah and her struggles as she went up to Shiloh to worship the Lord. She went in the temple. We're going to see what she did in the temple. Did she offer sacrifices? What did she do when she went to the temple? And also we're going to see what the man of God thought she was doing at the temple. But again, remember, they had to go up. They had to go up to Shiloh. And Shiloh for them was their Jerusalem to us. Shiloh was the place because the Ark of the Covenant was there 20 miles up in the Ephraim uh, land uh, of Ephraim, uh, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's where his land lied. Let's go to point number one. Hannah's prayer uh, vigorously. She prayed vigorously. It says, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. See, um, we're going to try to tell this series that you should get your worth out of God himself. You don't need to get your worth from man. You don't need to get your worth from woman. 
Uh, you don't need to get your worth in what you do or how much you have in a bag or if you're carrying a certain kind of bag. A woman should get her worth from God because if she get her worth from God, any challenges that she faces, she can depend upon God, and in Hannah's case, through prayer. Hannah had a dream to have a son, and because she had a dream to have a son, when she went up to Shiloh, um, she was in the tabernacle, and, and, and she began to pray, and, and it didn't say that she prayed a pretty prayer. Um, it didn't say that 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 she prayed a, a a celestial prayer. You know how some folk pray, uh, and they use all these celestial words to uh, describe who God is. And that's uh, I may be uh, the thought to do that at times, but you know I'm just uh, quoting the scripture. If, if I'm up there, it's it's the word of God. I'm trying to pray the word of God. But Hannah prayed a prayer. And, 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 and she prayed to the Lord, but her prayer wasn't pretty. She she began weeping bitterly. Is there anybody here in a bitter situation? Is there is there any woman here that's going through a bitter time? Her bitterness was because of her lack of being able to give birth to a boy. Your bitterness may be the divorce or a difficult marriage. Your bitterness might be the di disappointment of your children. Many times we pray to have these children, these children, and especially for the Christian, you know, if I have a baby, I want them to be Christian. I'm raising them for the Lord. I say, Lord, you can keep them if they ain't gonna live for you. And you might be in that situation where you raise that baby boy and that baby girl to live for the Lord and train them up in the ways of the Lord. And now they're out living footloose and fancy free as if they were never in the church and you're bitter about them and their lives. You may be bitter about the diagnosis that the doctor said and you can't figure out how or even why you have to go through a time such as this. You may be listening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Women, you, you may be bitter because your husband left you and got a younger model and, and you may be bitter because he cheated and you just can't believe that he cheated on you and not on you, but his whole family, his children and everything has been destroyed. You may be bitter because of the fire and the fire left only ashes. One of the most devastating things that you can go through, even worse than a tornado, because sometimes you can find precious things uh, after a tornado. It's, it may be in a general place, oh, but you may have gone through the tornado, gone through the flood, and everything has been taken away from you, and you just bit off. We, we're going to learn from uh, Ruth this year, and we know uh, Ruth had a mother-in-law, Naomi. And Naomi names, a uh, Hebrew name, Hebrew word comes from a word that means sweet. But when she got back to uh, Bethlehem, she said, don't call me Naomi. Don't call me sweet. Call me Myra because God has dealt bitterly with me. You may be listening and, and you feel like Myra. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you that if you feel like Myra, I want you to pour out your heart unto the Lord. Weep bitterly before the Lord. And, and this is the kind of prayer, this is the kind of prayer that you can't pray around anybody else. This is the kind of prayer that you've got to be alone. Uh, everybody needs to be about, uh, gone from the home. Are they, uh, are they going to do what the, even the priest did in the temple? He, approved, he, he accused her of being drunk because she was praying to the Lord bitterly. Everybody can't take your real prayer. So you got to make sure you're in private. This, this has to be a solemn meeting with the Lord where you can pour out your heart weeping before the Lord in Jesus' name. Are you going through a 
bitter time, Bethlehem? Are you going through a bitter time, woman of the Lord? Don't hold it and keep it until yourself. You need to pour out all this bitterness before the Lord. You got to learn how to truly pray unto the Lord where you can be truly transparent about all that you're going through, all that you're feeling. Even if you don't feel like it's right, you better look at Job. Job, oh, was bitter before the Lord. Hello, somebody. And he poured out his soul before the Lord because of the bitterness that he was going through. You better learn how to pray voraciously before the Lord in Jesus' name. This kind of time and this kind of moment ain't going to take those little pretty fake prayers. Hello, somebody. I, I mentioned this last Sunday about a, 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 a Christian artist that said that she was beautifully broken. And it's a, it's a beautiful song. You want to you want to worship to it. But I'm here to tell you, you go through some stuff that you're not beautifully broken. Hannah wasn't beautifully broken. She didn't pray a beautifully broken prayer. She prayed a prayer weeping and bitterly before the Lord. Oh, when Naomi came back, oh, to Bethlehem, she came back having lost uh, her husband and two sons, uh, one daughter-in-law and had one left. She came back bitter. She wasn't beautifully broken. She was bitter. And she said, don't call me my name, which means sweet, call me Myra, because it was the Lord that did this to me. He did it to me. Oh, Hannah was going through. She was bitter and she had to pour out her heart unto the Lord. In Jesus' name, it's going to take that kind of prayer. Oh, to have to make it through this kind of trial. In Jesus' name. You're going to have to throw it and give it all out into the Lord. You're going to have to pray uh, the same kind of prayer that Jabez prayed. Jabez called upon the Lord of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me and, and, and bless me indeed and enlarge my territories that your hand might be with me, that you may keep me from harm so that it might not bring pain. And the Lord granted his report. Jabez named his mama named him Pain. Woo. That's what Jabez cried. His mama literally named him Pain, the Hebrew word Pain. So every time they called his life, his name, all of his life, they called him a pain. But Jabez was tired of living with the pain. And he had to call on the Lord and said, oh, Lord, that you would bless me indeed and that you would enlarge my child, that you would keep me from harm. My, my mama named me harm. My daddy wasn't there to stop her from naming in my heart. Everybody else just called me a pain my whole life. Oh, but I want something different now. And he called out to the Lord out of his pain. Hello, somebody. And he said that you might, uh, uh, that you might uh, not bring me oh, pain. And the Lord granted his request. You better learn how to pray oh, to make it through these times. In Jesus' name. And that's, that's why we need to get our word from the Lord. We know our word. So we call out to him. In Jesus' name, she prayed. Oh, not only did she pray, uh, 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 she prayed uh, 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 vigorously. She, 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 she prayed a vow. And, and you see, you, you hear us most of the time. We talk about praying to the Lord. We don't need to make a vow. You don't need to make a promise. But there's some folk who have made promises to the Lord when they got in trouble and they've kept their vow. There's, there's many people that would share that, that, that I, I prayed and I said, Lord, if you get me out this time, I'll never do it again. If you, if you get me out this time, Hannah made a vow to the Lord. And the thing is, you make a vow to the Lord, a promise to the Lord, you need to keep that promise. And Hannah made a vow, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you would look on, on your servant's misery, Lord, I'm miserable, I'm bitter, I'm going through pain, and you remember me, and, and, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, remember me, Lord, out of this misery, give me a son. 
this is her vow. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. That was like the Nazarene law, uh, a vow, just like uh, uh, Samson was supposed to be honored, that vow. And she said, I'm going to, you give me this son. Basically, I'm going to give it back to you, give him back to you, to which would, should be all that God has given us. We should say, Lord, I'm going to give it back to you. You bless this business. I'm going to give it back. I'm going to tie all off the, the proceeds of this business, the proceeds of this ministry, the proceeds of, of the job that you gave me. Lord, I vow that I'm going to give it back in Jesus' name. She made a vow, church. She made a vow, and God heard her vow and, and, and answered her prayers. Because it says in 1 Samuel 1 and 22, it says, but Hannah did not. This time they went up to Shiloh, but Hannah did not. After the boy's wing, she said to her husband, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to stay there permanently. She kept her vow and she winged the boy. And she took him and gave him back to the Lord. Somebody's reminded today of a vow you made from the Lord or to the Lord. And God says, it's time for you to keep your vow. You said, if I save you, that you would preach for me. You said, if I save you, that you would serve me. You said, if I save you, but you got loose from the situation I saved you from and you forgot the vow that you made. God says today, I'm here to collect on the vow that you made made in Jesus name she made a vow out of her misery church saints of God and it was that vow that moved God to move in her life in Jesus name this last point at least I keep you too long Bethlehem it says we're talking about tonight a woman should get her worth through prayer a woman should get her worth through prayer because through prayer, you get the victory. Hannah prayed victory. Now, I cut off uh, all this madness that Eli, uh, uh, the priest, uh, put Hannah through. And this is why I said some prayers, you shouldn't pray in public. Because you need to be totally and completely transparent. You need to pray out your emotions. You need to pray out your tribulations. You need to pray out your trials. And if somebody come in the middle of your conversation, they would probably think that you're being sacrilegious. Woo! But, but, but what you're really exercising through prayer is that you have a personal relationship with God and you can pray to him frankly. Woo! You can pray to him frankly as opposed to praying all these pretty prayers. Oh, you need to learn how to pray how you feel before the Lord. She said, I'm miserable. I'm miserable being childless. I'm miserable. This woman is, 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 is taunting me. Somebody's miserable because your co-workers are taunting you. Your husband are taunting you. You may even be in a sister wife situation and the other wives are taunting you. Oh, but God says uh, there's no situation that you're in that I cannot intercede. Woo! Let me say that again. There's no situation that you're in that God cannot intercede with. But you got to be able to pray and pray him. Pray to him frankly. You got to pray to him in private because folk won't understand your relationship with God when you pour your soul out to him. Oh, people say I can pray, but they ain't really never heard me pray, pray. You know that pray, pray where you fall out before the Lord, and I mean, you just let it all out. You just tell him how you feel, 
and you just you, you prostrate before the Lord and you're praying it all out. Oh, you ain't really ever heard me pray like that. That when I when I'm walking around the house and crying out to the Lord, uh, um, because folk, most people cannot take that kind of praying because they don't have that kind of relationship with God. But God says to make it out of this one, those little pretty prayers ain't going to make it this time. You got to pour your heart and your soul out to the Lord in private. Don't even let the preacher hear you pray. Woo, that's deep. He should have known. He should have known. Because I know if, I, if you catch me praying to myself, you're probably going to think I'm crazy. Woo. Because I'm letting it all out before the Lord. If you want to have victory, you better learn how to pray, pray. Ah, that little pretty praying that you've been doing up to this point ain't going to get you through. You got to learn how to pray, pray, and, and pour it out before the Lord in Jesus' name. And after she explained to the preacher, say, hey, hey, I ain't drunk now. I was just praying to the, I was just letting it all out. I was letting it all hang out. I, I'm in this miserable situation I, I, and I can't do what I want to do. And I'm miserable. And I, I just, I just had to pray to the Lord. You see, that's why we don't even need a priest. Woo. Because priests can take some stuff out of context and be wrong. Woo. Jesus died on the cross and he took the place of the priest. He was the lamb and the priest. Ah, oh, man, no longer do we need a preacher, though you can't ask me to pray for you, but you don't really need me. Hello, somebody. When you learn how to pray, pray. Hello, somebody. But sometimes you do need to call somebody to help you pray, pray. Um, and, 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 and you got to have people to pray and intercede on behalf of you because they know how to pray, pray. Hello, somebody. Pray as if your life depended upon it. That's what that's the kind of prayer that she was praying. Hello, some prayer that she was praying. And, and, and once she got the preacher to understand, he said, Go in peace and, and, and the Lord, and may the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked him. Hello, somebody. God says today to somebody that just learned how to pray, pray, that just poured the out, out to the Lord, and you and you thought that he didn't hear you last night when you were crying out to him. God says today through the man of God, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked. And the God of Israel granted her for what she had asked. And God says, I'm going to give it to you. But your hearts, the desire, what you've been praying for, what you've been seeking your whole life, where you've been, it seems unfruitful uh, all of this time for years. Uh, oh, pastor, oh, writer, oh, Christian actor, you've been pursuing this thing for the last 20 years and hadn't got your big break yet, but you poured out your heart out last night and God says, I heard you and it will be granted to you in Jesus' name. Hear, Lord, my heart's cry in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hear, Lord, my heart's cry. And, and, and this is what happened. And this other situation about birth, man, this, this, this thing about birth it has a big role in the Bible. And this is when later Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren and the Lord heard his prayer. And that's why you got to get the right people to intercede on behalf of you, those who know how to pray, pray. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. And the Lord heard his prayer, and his wife, uh, Rebecca, conceived the power of prayer. God can do the impossible still to this day. I believe it in Jesus' name that God can do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we ask, Bethlehem, or can imagine. Woman of God, he can still do that today in Jesus' name. But you better know where your worth lies. You get your worth through prayer. Because the situation may be saying that you are worthless. 
that it can't be done, that you don't have the right resources, that you don't have the right expertise, that you that you don't have the right producers, uh, you don't have the right writers, uh, you don't have the right investors in your company. But God says today, you better get your worth from me because it's through me that you can get the worth that you need to accomplish your will, God's will for your life. You better know who God is in your life through prayer because he still can do stuff ex nihilo. Testimony about our, our uh, television program that's supposed to go out and, and reach millions of folk. I said, they, I think they said it's 160 million folk going out over the satellite. And I think they said uh, 46 million more on cable, 25 million more supposed to be able to tune in through Raku and Fire TV and all of that. And, and I said, Sunday, we don't even have a camera. You said, preacher, what you using then? It's the camera on my computer. <laughs> don't even have a camera. And God is, uh, is going to use us. That, that's the God that I serve. Uh, you see, because I get to places where folk uh, like me not supposed to be, not because of who I am, but because who I believe in. Uh, because I know my God uh, don't need a lot of people around him to be powerful. He don't need a crowd of 20,000 to be powerful. Oh, he can take a few like he took the 12 and impacted the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. With 12, we get enamored with the crowd and think the crowd represents God, but God is not into the crowd. God is into himself. And if you know who he is, you can be one person asking God to do marvelous and miraculous and awesome things to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you ask or can imagine in Jesus' name. If you know who he is and what he can do, Isaac knew he was God and that he could do the impossible and he exceeded and exceeded on behalf of his wife. Oh, he didn't need, oh, uh, he didn't need fertility, a fertility a plan or clinic. He knew the God of God who created it all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm out of time, Bethlehem. Women, you, you need to get your worth from God through prayer. Because what the world says that you are right now don't mean that it has to be. Uh, the world may be saying that you're sick right now, but uh, if you intercede on behalf of God, uh, I'd rather hear God's report than man's report. You you don't have to be what the world has said. Hello, come here, Jay. The world that calls you a pain your whole life. Your mama and daddy abandoned you, didn't like you. Your mother was still there, but uh, she treated you like a pain. You, you've been barren for years and, and believe that there is no hope. That's a lie from the pit of God, a uh, pit, pit of hell. And, and God says today, you better get your worth from me. Because I can give you a bag without you having to take off your clothes to get a bag or to start, uh, what's that, a, 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 uh, one of those internet, uh, pornographic internet sites so you can get a bag by taking and showing yourself. God says, I can give you what you need without you doing all the things that you're doing. You need to get your worth from me and better learn how to pray. In Jesus' name, be encouraged, women of God. Here at Bethlehem Baptist Church is Women's Month. We want to encourage the women of God as well as the men of God because the same principles we're sharing for, for the women and, and we, we, we saw in Women's Month and I, I, Isaac came up with a testimony and Jabez came. So prayer is powerful, people. No matter who you are, you need to be encouraged to pray. Get your word from the Lord through prayer. I'm out of time, Bethlehem and Saints of God. I want to thank you for tuning in um, tonight. And as always, we're concerned about the decisions that you make. And the decision that I'm concerned about you making is for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You may have accidentally came across this 
broadcast. I can remember one of our members said that uh, we ended up on her television at her work. I think there's a way that a phone could sync or something like that, where you can sync and, and tie into uh, somehow God uh, enabled that to happen. I was on that television sharing a word. It, and it may be an odd way for you to come in contact with me today, but God wants you to be saved today. If you believe that Jesus Christ is God's only son, if you believe that he died for your sins and was buried and raised again on the third day, then today, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. Pray this simple prayer. Father God, what the preacher said really stood me up in my emotions about a God that I could pray to that can enable me to overcome my this bitter life that I've been living. And he told me about Jesus, who, who was the priest and the lamb. And I accept Jesus today for the pardoning of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, was buried and raised again on the third day so that today I may be saved. I give my life away to Jesus right now in Jesus' name. She prayed that prayer for the first time in your anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Um, I'm not inviting you to our church anymore because if you pray that prayer for the first time, you've been born into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. So we want to see you if you pray that prayer for the first time this coming Sunday at 311 North Dunbar, 311 North Dunbar, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and once I finish preaching this coming Sunday, I want you to come down after I finish and let me know that you pray to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we will accept you into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Um, but if you pray that prayer and you're nowhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you could be listening uh, other parts of the world. If you pray that prayer for the first time, we need you to get involved with other Christians. Uh, you need to join a church or you may even need to start a church. The Holy Spirit will lead you in what you would need to do. The Holy Spirit was given to you when you pray to accept Jesus Christ to lead and to guide you. He's going to guide you to your fellowship of the saints. I want to thank you for listening, Bethlehem. And as always, I would challenge you to stay connected. I want you to stay connected to God's person. Stay connected to God's precepts. And that's why you're in Wednesday Bible study. And I'll see you in Sunday school at 10 a.m. this coming Sunday, either through Zoom or in the sanctuary. Uh, stay connected to God's precepts, a daily study of the word of God as well. And stay connected to God's people. And that's why we meet in places like this and at church so that you can be connected. Let me go ahead and say this prayer of benediction. Father God, we thank you. We praise your holy name for you're truly worthy to be praised. I pray, Lord, uh, for this coming weekend, Lord, I pray that you would bless it, Father, for your glory. It's all about you uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's not even my day. It's your day because you did this. You planned this for my life. And I want to give you glory all 16 years. Bless the service for you. And Father God, as we leave today, put your heads of protection around us. Keep us safe from our harm and danger until we meet again. And the people of God said, amen. And praise the Lord, Bethlehem, you are dismissed in Jesus' name.